Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to today's episode of Straight Talks, a program where we talk and we discuss about the important issues that concern our state. While the world is crippled by the pandemic of COVID-19, global economies have crumbled and just like them, ours is also crippling like a patient etherized on the table. In an effort, in an effort to to get back on track, the Chief Minister of Meghalaya has initiated a task force, an economic task force, by which he can resurrect the economy of the, straight, of the state. And that is what we are going to discuss in today's episode. The topic for today's discussion is the economic task force of the Meghalaya government, its issues and challenges. But before we move forward with the discussion of the topic, let's take a look at a short clip that we have in store for you. While the world is paralyzed by the ungodly pandemic that has swept across the globe of men like an unannounced grim reaper, along with men, gigantic economies have also crumbled and like them, our own is also lying crippling like a patient etherized on the table. In addressing the crisis that has caused havoc globally, the Meghalaya cabinet has a rendezvous on the recently formed Chief Minister's Economic Task Force and discuss the need to work on sector-specific strategies to tackle the economic disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic that prompted the nationwide lockdown. The government of Meghalaya has begun to draw a blueprint to roadmap the resurgence of the state's economy back on track. The direction of the objective of the task force is to look into the prevailing situation and suggest measures in initiative interventions in core sectors like agriculture and tourism and revive the state's economy from the clutches of the negative growth rate. The state government laid focus on the importance of the right policies for investment in the right sectors with right partners will enable to have a roadmap to further strengthen the existing industries and infrastructure, particularly for promoting agriculture and its allied sectors. The highlight of the economic task force rests on taking advantage of our position and our resources by creating an enabling environment for investment and diversification of our trade and business opportunities. The task force will be the tool that will pave the way forward as we stretch our direction towards the future to reorganize, rebuild and reconstruct. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we move on with our discussion for today's topic, let me first introduce to you our esteemed panelists. First up, we have Ba Rudi Wajri, who is the retired Ambassador Government of India. Ba Rudi has also been awarded by the World Business Forum for his outstanding contributions as Deputy Consul General of India in New York, where he served from 1999 to 2002 and for also catalyzing investments for India. Welcome, sir. Next up, we also have another very enthusiastic and very young man who is filled with so much of passion for the society and for the state. We have none other than Dr. Benjamin Lingdor. 
So Dr. Benjamin, he is the Assistant Professor of Tourism and Hotel Management, Nehu. Quite, uh, it is quite unfortunate uh, that at this point of time, we were supposed to be joined by our Chief Minister, but maybe because of some unavoidable circumstances, he is not available to be with us. But before we move on with the discussion, I, I would just like to throw my first question at uh, ba Rudy here. Barudi, uh, based on uh, the topic that we have in store for you right now, what do you think is the biggest challenge of the government at this point of time? Thank you, Ba Mebon, uh, in fact, uh, for uh, this opportunity to be in this episode. Uh, I like, in fact, the, the, the name of this program is called Straight Talk. So that uh, enables us, in fact, to be as straight mm -hmm. as possible or as candid as possible. Now, before I come to your question of challenge, mm. I just like to, because the whole idea of economic task force is a product of the situation arising out of the coronavirus or COVID-19. Mm. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to really congratulate the, the government under the leadership of the Chief Minister mm which is trying very hard and doing a lot, in fact, to try and lead the battle against the virus itself. But apart from that, of course, to take care of uh, everything else that come out of the difficulties arising, including like uh, distribution and supply chain of food and essential commodities. So to that extent, I really congratulate the government and because that itself is a major challenge by itself. Uh, now. Coming to the subject of economic task force itself, uh, it would have been, in fact, uh, when I was asked to participate, uh, it would have helped me more, in fact, to be able to really uh, apply my mind to, to in a sense that deeper into the subject, if I was able to get more information about this economic task force. In fact, uh, the clipping in the beginning give me some idea about what it is. But other than that, I've seen some uh, something in the newspaper about it, but that's about it. So it's uh, I went to the Meghala government website, but there's no information mm -hmm. about it. Uh, so in fact, uh, why I want to emphasize on that is because I'll come to the specifics later. Because one of the challenges of this whole economic task force should be data. Mm. When I say data, it's a, it should be comprehensive data ranging from the impact of the COVID-19 itself on the people, be it sector-wise, mm. the clipping mentioned about sector-wise priorities, be it agriculture, tourism as mentioned. But more than that, for instance, the data on returnees. Mm. Now, the very fact that I read about something like 30,000 returnees have come back to the states mm. or maybe more. These must be comprising of both students and a lot of working population who have worked outside. And the fact, especially the working population which went outside, the very fact that they went outside means that there were no mm. opportunities here. So that itself means something to it about the state of the economy in, in, the, in, mm. in the state. So. But whereas if you have the proper data, then it helps you. Mm. It helps you to make informed decisions. It helps you to find solutions to problems. It helps you to know that mm. if you face a particular problem, you know from the experience in the past how to come, to how to solve it. Mm. So that is, in fact, that is why when I went to the website of Meghala government, I didn't find anything mm. about the economic task force itself. So I think I was a little disappoint, disappointed mm. about it. To be straight talk about it, I was disappointed. Okay, we'll come back to Ba Rudy uh, very quickly in a short while. Uh, ba Benjamin, according to you, what is the biggest challenge that the government is facing at this point of time based on the economic task force that it has put forward? Uh, well, uh, this economic task force is a, is a very important task force uh, because uh, the, the pandemic as it is now is showing no signs of ending mm. uh, anytime soon. So we have to think really hard as to how we can revive the economy of the state. 
and uh, I think this task force has got its work cut out mm. because uh, right now the situation is such that uh, many people have lost their jobs and uh, many people who have come back mm. like Barudi said just now who have come back to the state uh, they don't they don't really know where they're going to be employed in the next uh, two three four mm. months so we are dealing with a situation where there is a lot of uncertainty at the same time we have to we have to factor uh, the 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 facts of, of of the matter which is we have to provide something for these people mm. and uh, this this task force is is something which is like uh, uh, which will have to look into the revival of the state mm. economy to start mm. with. Uh, that is the starting point. And in the bigger picture, beyond the revival of the state economy, the bigger picture is transformation of the state economy from where mm. it is now mm. into something else which is of a higher level in the next mm. three, four, five years down the line. So basically, the, the challenge for the economic task force is, is of two uh, of, of two twofold challenge. Number one is revival of the economy right now, okay. and number two is the long term vision that we have for the state. Because see, COVID nineteen is a problem right now, but the the task force must must look into this problem as an opportunity whereby we can transform the economy of the state. And let's not look at COVID nineteen mm -hmm. as a problem per se. It is a problem, but let's look at this as a uh, an opportunity where we can change the economy of the state and and what is important over here is that we have to uh, look into the economy of the state not only from the perspective mm. of this COVID-19 pandemic it is there we cannot do anything about it but when we plan from now on don't just plan from the perspective of COVID-19 plan from the perspective of you know the transformation of the economy mm. of the state this uh, is uh, just one aspect but we have to look into the bigger yeah, picture. but there's this one thing uh, 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 that you have mentioned that uh, like Barudi have already mentioned that there are almost 3,000 returnees or more. 30,000. 30,000. Uh, 30, 30, uh, I'm sorry. 30,000 or more that who have just returned. And then you have also said that 20,000 is, uh, is the number that the government is looking to employ. But uh, quite just recently, on the 4th of July, uh, the, deputy, the Deputy Chief Minister of Meghalaya has stated in the Telegraph that in the year, uh, till the year 2017, there are actually 43,000 uh, like youths who have who have also enrolled 43,000 who have enrolled with uh, the uh, employment exchange mm -hmm. who are still unemployed so yeah. do you feel that it is fair for the government to employ the returnees who are just 20,000 whereas neglecting the 43,000 that are already here right now? See, Mebon, that is what I said just now. Yeah. Don't look at this problem only from the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Look at it in, in a bigger picture. Now, when you say providing employment, don't don't segregate between, mm. you know, the youths who are already here in the state and the youths who have come back from outside. Mm. Okay, because understand one thing, creation of jobs, creation of employment is basically uh, is, is basically, you know, uh, an interplay mm. in the market. Jobs and employment actually mm. is not really created by the government. Yeah. Jobs and employment is created by the forces of demand and supply that we have mm. in the market. That is one thing which we must always factor. Now, when you let these forces of demand and supply play in the market when it comes to creation of jobs and employment, then, then the people will see opportunities for meaningful mm. and gainful employment. But here yeah. is the question. What is the role of the government? In this case, the role of the economic mm. task force. The role of the economic task force right now is what I said before, mm. is to you know, channelize, look at the bigger picture beyond COVID and channelize all the resources mm. that it has so that we can match this gap between the demand and supply. And in matching this gap between demand and supply, which is the market forces for creation of jobs and employment, mm. we'll be able to create meaningful employment to our youth. Mm. I'll just give one small example. Uh, one in fact, mm. two examples, if you allow me. The smaller example is this. In Shillong right now, if you go and do takeaways, mm. you will notice that in most of the takeaways, big or small, there mm. are no paper cups, there are no paper plates, and there are no these paper bags, the brown bags. Now, mm. if you ask them, why is this happening? They will tell you, this is a small example, mm. but it's a meaningful employment example. They will tell you because these supplies, they come from Assam. Mm. Now, they will not come from Assam for the next two, three months, so what do we do? 
this is this is the gap between demand and supply which i was talking about the the interplay of the market forces and this is where employment is created now who will see this the government will have to see this the economic task force will have to see this mm -hmm. and then you channelize resources so that you know you, you you create a structure a framework whereby people know that this is a place where i can do something in terms of my employment a bigger example there is a gap in the demand and supply for organic agricultural mm -hmm. produce there's a gap okay now when there is a gap there is a appointment th th there is an opportunity for you know employment mm -hmm. of the youth but but you have to channelize your resources in such a way you have to channelize your resources in such a way that you know uh, you'll be able to match this gap between demand and supply now who will channelize the resources who has the resources to do that the government through its government agencies mm -hmm. and by doing that you can employ people into meaningful organic agriculture organic farming so that we can meet the demand for organic produce in our state so you see the interplay of demand and supply in the market is very important now the economic task force may born it's not like you know it will say that now we're going to create 10000 jobs for the next mm. two years no they will not be able to do that because jobs are created by the market jobs are not created by the government except mm. for the government uh, positions of mm. course so let's leave that aside but mm. we're talking about the bigger population over here another 50 60000 over here how do you give employment to them okay. this is the bigger picture that we are looking at no, I want to add to this. Mm. Not only add, but I want to be to say something more fundamental to this. Okay. The core here, which uh, Benjamin was mentioning, mm. one is the employment part of it, whether it's for returnees or those mm. existing already in the past in the employment exchange, and also, of course, the play of the market, interplay mm. of the market, supply and demand. Now, I'm saying things from the background which I have, having work in. Soviet system economies, mm. capitalist economies, developing countries, developed countries, mixed economies of India. So I'm saying with that, the, f the fundamental requirement about, let's say a state like Meghalaya, is the need for a development paradigm of its own, a model of its own, mm. which attract other stakeholders to come and create, do the job creation part. Because the government by itself doesn't have all the resource, be it financial, mm. be it technological, be it know-how, be it expertise. So what you do? You create a model mm. for other stakeholders to come in. That I don't see at all. I have been mm. looking at it. In fact, I was going through the budget speech of the chief minister, uh, but I never saw anything at all about capital investment. Anywhere. I'll give you a solid example. Yesterday, the Prime Minister of India, he addressed the India Global Week mm. in London. Now, what did he ask? He said, we are laying a lay carpets, uh, uh, sorry, red carpets mm. for uh, investors to come to India. You're talking about orga organic. Last month in June, in this Indian Chamber of Commerce uh, function, uh, uh, he addressed. What did he say? He said to convert the whole Northeast into an organic hub for India. Mm. Now. These are the some of the points mm. which can be brought in into the development model for Meghalaya. You leverage on that. Leverage with your own factors, mm. be it agriculture, be it tourism, be it anything else that comes in with it. So that's in exactly so the model to attract mm. other stakeholders to invest is very important. Otherwise, there will be no jobs created mm. at all. Government alone cannot. You have mentioned it. Mm. And, and so that model part of it is very, very important. So I'd like to stress on that. That, that is the macro part. So mm. oh, into that whole model, you bring in uh, the, the, the investment security concept, the Atma Nirbhar self-reliant concept, which the Prime Minister is talking. Mm. It's not necessarily self-contained. He said about it's only to, to learn to be self-reliant, but at the same time, invite other investors also. How do you dovetail that into the model for Meghalaya? The, the out, out of the stimulus package announced by the Prime Minister for a, a MSMEs, mm. liquidity, how do you take advantage of that? That should be part of that model. Okay. Uh, in talking, in speaking about the, the returnees again, the, like uh, Dr. Benjamin has already said, it depends on the market, uh, on the fluctuation of the market. Uh, and why do you feel that there is no such market for for a very long time, why do you feel that uh, the government did not see the need of uh, employment 
of the people that are already here for such a long time, Barudi? Good question. I think, you know, the very fact, uh, th this, there is a saying that you say, in, uh, convert a crisis into opportunity. Mm. Extraordinary circumstances should bring in extraordinary solutions. So this is the time. What we have not done in the past, let's do it now. Mm. Now, some reforms should, should, should come in, in this whole process. I'll give you a solid example. Now, let's say you're talking about agriculture. Agriculture comes out of land, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, there, ha there is no land cadastral survey at all has taken place in Meghalaya. Now, why is that necessary? Because you have the land records. Why mm -hmm. you need the land records? That is what you can, it becomes bankable. Mm. Why every young person here, he says we have difficulty in getting loans from the bank. Why? Mm. Because you have no collateral proper. It's not easy. The, because the land is not, there's no land records. It, it may be individually done because you register my land into, mm. you know, to here in the district court or what is, but there's no properly land record, a systematic mm. way of doing it, which I think a reform which should be done immediately. And this is something which is very fundamental because out of that, you can create jobs out of that. So mm. this, this is very important. I have other things to, 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 to mention which I can, in, in macro terms, which I, I want to say, but I'll say it later. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll get back to Barudi in a short while. Uh, the government has also highlighted that agriculture and tourism to be the most impor two important factors of the task force. Do you think it is quite ironic at this point of time that the government is mentioning, is mentioning tourism uh, at this point of time as a part of the task force? Because quite honestly, like, no tourism can take place at this point of time, uh, especially when the cases of COVID-19 is surging in the state every now and then, every single day. Yes, uh, you see, it's uh, uh, a bit too early to mention about tourism and tourism-related mm -hmm. activities because that will have to wait for some time. But, mm -hmm. but there's no problem in mentioning it. I don't mm -hmm. see any problem in that. It can be a part of the policy and planning paper. Mm -hmm. It can be in the mind of the government. So you can mention, mm -hmm. but in terms of uh, the opening up of tourism, that will take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because I'll just give you one small example. Recently, Spain in mm -hmm. Europe, uh, which is one of the le leading international tourism destinations in the world, opened up its tourism uh, for certain pockets of, of, of the country. And what happened was that in those pockets, we again saw a surge of mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 cases. Uh, another example, uh, Australia tried to open up recently, but yet again we saw a surge in the number mm. of cases. So we have to learn from that mm. as a country, and since we are talking about our state, Mikhail, we have to learn from that. Tourism will have to wait. How long will it wait? It will, it will maybe it will take mm. this entire year and mm. the early part of next year. Because most people are saying, unless and until we have, uh, uh, you know, a, a cure for, mm. for this, for this particular virus. Uh, many of the activities which involve travel and, and hosp hospitality and you know allied sort of activities will have, will have to be put on the back burner for now. Mm. But coming to agriculture, agriculture is a different, different story altogether. Because you see, in, in our state, we like to talk about tourism. Mm. But uh, you know, Mayborn, I've said this many times, that for our state, if you want the state to develop, if you want inclusive growth, if you want everyone to be a part of this growth story, mm. Rudy was mentioning about the model, a part of that model and the inclusive growth story, then agriculture is central to that. Mm. It's very simple for our state. You ramp up on agriculture, you create employment, you create economic growth. Mm. You know, in one of the programs which I, which I attended here itself, I, I, I mentioned this. I'll just mention one more time so that I, I can cre create a context for whatever mm. we are discussing. In 2019, uh, the, the state uh, GDP was around 19, uh, sorry, not 19, it was around uh, 32,000 crores. Now, they say, as per, as per data, that the contribution of agriculture to that was 30%. Some, some, some data says that the contribution is only 20%. Mm -hmm. Now, even if you go by 30%, the contribution comes to 9,600 mm -hmm. crores. You know, to this 32,000 crores, which is the state GDP, the contribution of agriculture is 9,600 mm -hmm. crores. Now, looks like a good figure, a handsome figure, and we can feel happy about it. But mm -hmm. if you look at the 
demographics and the macroeconomics of this mm. particular figure, you will realize that two thirds of the workforce that we have in our mm. state, they are they are engaged in agriculture and allied activities. Now, match that with the fact that 80% of the population of the state, they are in rural areas mm. and one way or the other, they are attached to agriculture. Now. 80% of the population of the state as of today, where as per estimate this, the population of Meghalaya is around 36 or 37 lakhs. So 80% of that comes to around 29 lakhs mm. odd. Now that's a huge number, but the contribution is only 30% or even 20% to the uh, state GDP, which means what? Most of the people doing agriculture mm. are not earning enough. Yeah. Agriculture is simply for sustenance, just to survive hand to mouth. They are not being able to make a living out of that. So that is why you want to tackle this problem during mm. a COVID situation or beyond COVID situation. Mm. Focus on agriculture, then you focus on something else. Mm. Because you see, if agriculture works for you, tourism will also work for you, rural yeah. tourism. And if agriculture works for you, then micro, small and medium enterprise in terms of agro-based enterprise, food processing, mm. etc., will also work for you. So agriculture is good for the state. Mm. Agriculture is something which you should bank upon. Yes, mm. there are there are there are articles, there are there are reports, even from our very own state government, which says that you know, the net zone area and the total crop area in, in the state is very less. It's as low as 10%, 12%, lower, much lower than the northeastern average of around 18%. So, and, and they say the topography of the state is mm. such that we cannot do proper agriculture over here. So, and, and jhum cultivation and, and the traditional uh, methods of practicing agriculture and all yeah. that, they, they, they list down a number of factors. I agree. Yeah, we'll, I don't we'll contest. Come back. We'll, just, we'll uh, come I back agree. I don't contest. Yeah. I agree. I don't contest to that. Yeah. But but we can learn from other countries, which are also hilly terrains, yeah. and we can learn from them how we can still do agriculture and develop the economy through through you know agriculture being the main engine for driving growth. Because if agriculture is there, we'll have growth. If if we, if we ignore agriculture, we will continue to suffer like we are suffering now. Right now. Okay. We'll we'll get back to you, but Benjamin, in a short while. Barudi, lada lada ni pet yaka sorkar jong karimu, but yaka sorkar jong kajela jong ni 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 shamba ka ka kran bet shepang ka agriculture, ka kran bet shepang ka rap kariang, ka kran bet shepang ka jingdon kam jong ka rap kariang. Hendre lada ni pet pada kumbai long i ba Benjamin ba ka contribution jong ka rap kariang shaka GDP ka long tang lepo persen. De ka ika jing e ka ba khmat du ka bangidan nakarap kariang ka ba ngingim la bangin ya chakmat akaba yadai ba karap kariang okay uh, p what i think eh, is that you need a proper institution to run the show hmm. when i say institution is not only a government institution now one example of this battle against covid 19 which has hmm. come out which we have seen is the role of communities Without the communities, you won't have been able to f help the government at all in whether it's it's in the uh, mm. uh, enforcing the SOPs, mm. the social distancing, or the supply chain of essential commodities, or even tracing the the uh, the uh, primary contacts, secondary contacts. Uh, mm. Look at the role of communities, and this is not only here; all over India. Mm. Now, why not we institutionalize these communities properly? When I say institutionalize means what? Empower them, mm -hmm. structure them properly so that they become more accountable. This concept to me that community institutions here, they call the shnangs, mm. banshulang, you know, voluntary, it doesn't work anymore. It has to be like the rest of India where mm. they have a proper elections and properly paid. Chai they get a remuneration out mm. of it. This kind of voluntary, <coughs> you can get up to a point. Mm. And the sad some people are very passionate they give the all out i'm not ruling that part but the point is that if you really want it it should not be ad hoc it should be a proper institution now with that community whether it's agriculture mm. let them take it it should be community based community generated and with the kind of proper funding which comes from the government of india like the way they do to the panchayats mm. to the gram panchayats mm. straight mm. to the traditional to the bodies uh, the the yeah. right low yeah. you know grassroots mm. bodies it makes a lot of difference they become mm. more involved become more dynamic because as i said take advantage of this momentum of the role of communities right now which mm. they are doing let's change this when i talk about reforms this is exactly mm. let this be a new model 
this is the chance and opportunity to do it. The Bapak Benjamin, ladang ipet, ladang ipet ya kini ban employ kini ki beriama bangin ikam ya ka government ruka keran bet sepang kini ki rural employment, rural employment, rural employment. Ngin liat kumnu pada ya kini ki beriama ki ba ki ki badan hasar. Kumnu kumnu ka government ka ka kadan jing temu terai ba bekan ikam ya ki beriama hasar. Namar baro tinggi melak balik lo cekinong kendong bangin liat drap ngingi don kam hang ni hasar. Tama kum hang ni hasar mentangi iba kim don ki kam. Di pilak ban ai jing mut kendiat ba ki ai ki kam ba ka government ka lak ban generate. Haka ni kapur hang ni hasar na bentaki nong sar. Hapok nong kendong hi. Hapok nong kendong hi. Kawai ni kilat ya ka ba ngilak ban lek ban ai kam jiki. Jiki kena asam la jungi kalong ba. Ngin ya persyang ban ban sedang to start. Start up ban sedang ya ki ni ki food processing units. Agricultural food processing units. Ladang ni lak ban lek ya ka ni ya. Nah, terai bun bahagi kena gigi jungi, hapok kinong kinong gigi jungi, gigi balak ban yok kam hang dia. Pi ini bon ka ban ong yok kam ke susuk bahang dia. Tama, there's a huge process tu. Bun bahagi ike gigi bafi dia ban leh, kerang bafin absorb gigi kena hak tu kejat kam. Jadi pengikiran sepang food processing. Lada pi ong yudu nu kena mentah fili. Cakap lu kuno kasih nang pi ong, eh bapa, eh kong kong train nak mafi hapok food processing. Kajubab nak ikan long, kei kata ingin lek kumno. Anada pi ang tong ini proses potato chips, mo chips. Kian ang kabening kong ka kajing kili kabenbi nak ikan long bang ingin lek kumno. Hakan lu kerukam ingin teri kam, kam machine ayu kan dia, kono penur kam ya kan dia. Tapi siapa ingin poy syata em? A lot of capacity building, training and development is required. Kali hang ni bungo angam ni. Mebon bah, the government will have to channelize its resources. Manu ban leh training and development. Manu ban leh capacity building. Kadai ka kam jungka sorkar ka jungi. In this case, the economic task force will have to look into that. Bangin 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 beli ka capacity jungi kena jungi hapo nong kendong. Banyak na potato chips. Hari ni kata, dengi sedang pun beli ya kini ki units. Bagi kena kila ban long absorb hang tu. Now, mday barok kau ki balak ban long manager or entrepreneur. Di ni am. Di Maybe you entrepreneur undang tang uai, lani lai sahut hak uai kesinong. Hendai kata ke enterprise kerjung upat kan long hak kata guru kamba kalak ban ai employment ya shibun kibrio. Fi day hang ni pan financial incentive lani financial assistance lani economic assistance kat kapa fi kau comes into play. The government again will have to ensure through the task force balarangi le akum dia kapisa kan wan na a equipment skin wan na a larger machine skin wan na a. Fi hang ta. Nong kendong, just a small example. There can be many other examples. La Shai can dala open bahag ke ekonomi ke jungi, and we can do rural tourism even better. Then we can take the help of of community based tourism and eco tourism and employ shu shu ki kena into this particular economic activity. Now, ni one spot sor pan. Kadai kajing kili ke jung fi kapa biang pan. Le aku mno you kena hapo sor. One possibility, kau bangai example hapo nong kendong mentan. One possibility hapo ki sor ke jungi. Pee, kini kita produce kebangi proses haki nong kendong kijungi. You have to market them. Kau market kedai hee haki sor in towns and cities. Mana pun yang rap hang dia, kini kita kena kijungi kebudan hang dia. They can be provided gainful employment in some marketing channels. Kau mula begin market, jadi kini kita produce haki nong kendong kijungi, sya kishnong haki sor kijungi, but and the smaller towns and even smaller villages. Kebala, you know, kebudan enough population haka bagi don ke purchasing power and Dalam ikan ni hebat sahaja selang, naik kam he ayek i. The answer kita tangkau bay service sector. Mau, nama apa sahaja selang hi, ilok ngamong bah pemula beli food processing pula, beli mula. Tama is better bangi don shabar shabar sorry kita kita units kan. Hang ni hi kita beli service sector. Kita nak they will be involved in the service sector, marketing of you know agricultural produce which we have into 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 the cities. Kata kerja, kata kerja ke one of the simple, very, a very simple process. Kau sedang in a very simple way, nampak orang kandang, kau kau in a very simple way, haki sorgi jungi. Kerja hang dia, haka bangi don kam bangi tray kandet dia. Nampak bah, this is the gap between demand and supply. Di muka ni lah iya ke demand, di kadang kene ka kam haka bangi hak banle, haka liang jong supply. Ban malu ban ay kene ka assistant haka bangi lah ban ramp up yakin dia baru. Kerja kerja ke kam jong ka Jangan kesorkar. Pih ini nama bah mana pih orang kandet nih bah employment opportunities di dunia hapus state. Kau jangan ngam siam kumta. Harga jing pay kau jangan siam bedhi. Ngangai iba we have enough 
employment opportunities tangba ngi don come ban guide bhai kini khna ki jungi a lot of counseling consultancy a lot of training you know a lot of mentoring if you like ngi don come the ban ai ki and this can be done by the private sector people like you and me it can be done by us and as far as resources and mm. and and channelizing of resources are concerned so mm. that you can transfer products from here to another place so that they can be marketed katu pa kadiga kam jong sarkar and and maybe if you like public private partnerships ya trai lang bagi private sector to build infrastructure so that ngila ban lei ai halor kan ni te ladangi ladangi pet ya khdiat mo ladangi pet ya 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 kan ni ka jing ai kam kum ngidang shi i men hakani ba ka government ka ka kawanya lam ki ni ki breu ki banabar mo ki skill workers ki breu banabar ki balalong skill who are skilled in whatever they are doing do you feel that the the main fault of the government is actually to send the youths from our state outside to be skilled than to bring people from outside who are skilled to our state because ladang 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 wanyalam si wanyalam ki breu ki ba ki bala pentebit ila di nasabar kemu kini ki kena na jungi kinum yo kam syu lanu lanu ru dai film thrai ba ka government ka dei ban pha syu ki kena jungi Shabar, ban pentebit kenapa kini lah, bahkan hikai di kelawan pai kini lah, bahkan hikai yang jadi kena jengi. We must be very clear in our mind that mm. government cannot do everything. Mm. Government should, let's say, economic task force mm. lay down clear policies mm. what government can do, what private sector should do, and mm. what can be a PPP model between government and private. That should be very clear. Okay, mm. if you take about, let's say, kena mm. store jengi mah, let's say. Especially kini ba one return as we see in Bangalore and Delhi, Mumbai and other places, mm. they are mostly most of them they work in the IT sectors. Mm. They are back in Shillong now. We government should come out. Let's say the economic task force itself should come out with, mm. with the model mm. where the IT players from outside need local uh, skill skill uh, here mm. and make use of it. That's what. When I say stakeholders, mm. I mean other private investors also, because government by itself doesn't have the money also to invest. Mm. So you can't expect. That's why, kini ki kena iba buwan hasar jungi ki bolong IT related ki bla one ish ishway. They are exposed. They are skilled. They are semi skilled. Make use of them. That is very specific. I'm giving you. Okay, the IT sector part of it. And if you, if you, if if the economic task force work in collaboration together with, let's say, I am here. Hmm. You will find a way how to go about it, because definitely when you have the data that this much of school skill people, let's say, I'm sure the the players like Tata Consultancy, mm -hmm. Infosys, Wipro, hmm. the other so many of them, they will they need local resource for this. Hmm. At the most, they'll bring a manager from outside, and they'll use our local boys and girls here hmm. who are capable of doing it. So can you get a kabala abanyarap ikibanasar? Now. Uh, uh, talking about uh, you know uh, what more entrepreneurship can do. I'll give you very mm. specific example. You're talking about potato. Mm. Upan is the main crop of mm. Meghalaya. You're talking about potato ship. Fine, okay. But there's one here. By the way, I was the ambassador in Peru. Mm. The International Potato Research Institute is located there. I associated with that, and the the research there mm. they know very well more than us about. The, pop, the potato from Meghalaya. There's one thing unique about it, and that uniqueness of the potato is why the moisture content is very high, mm. and it is suitable, very fit to make vodka. Mm. Do you know that? <laughs> no, that's the first time I'm introducing <laughs> it. That's why I said mm. it's perfect to make vodka out of the potato from Meghalaya because the high mm. moisture content. That is it. Now coming to other uh, horticultural products, mm. wine making now. When I mm. say wine, I don't mean grape wine because you don't really have grape here. Mm. The fruit wine from Meghalaya, all the fruits, kini so pho and so sugar ki so peach, mm. they just most of them is wasted. Mm. You can produce good fruit wine from mm. here, and this can give opportunities of employment and entrepreneurs here, mm -hmm. everywhere here. I'll give you an example. The other day I had a, in the panel discussion on horticulture in Northeast, where this person uh, in Nagaland he mm. is involved into honey mission. This fellow from Mumbai, he said, "Oh, I am interested in that." You see the network, mm -hmm. you understand. 
So when you talk about marketing also, see how the linkage is taking place. Mm. Your product from here nowadays, you can link it to that person, he can popularize it. Mm. I'm glad there are local entrepreneurs already here. Some of them like Vijay Barsa, Dasu Marlin Majao, they're doing something about coffee, they do something mm. about Jack chocolate and things like that. But this is something which is a good example which they are doing mm -hmm. and s much more of our young people can do it. Mm -hmm. All you need is government, yes, lay down the proper opportunities, training also government should come in. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to capital investment, you need a private sector for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, when, when we talk about uh, the economy of the state, the economy of the state, as you can see, that it is um, dependent on liquor and coal to a large extent. And uh, quite on, uh, quite frankly, like there is a lot of uh, illegal trade of coal. So the, whenever coal is being traded illegally, the the money is not shown. It it's like it's it disappears. So that turns into black money. Black money. So don't you think that in Meghalaya, the reason why the economy of Meghalaya is so low is that there is so much of black money involved. You know, uh, one of the one of the main reasons, like like you said, for for the you know for the decline in the economy of Meghalaya, mm. is basically that for so many years, many years. I remember right from the time I was very small. Mm. For so many years, we have always depended on coal mm. for revenue. Coal was equal to revenue. Coal was everything. You have coal, uh, you have revenue. If you don't have coal, uh, then then you don't have revenue like since 2014 uh, revenue from coal has stopped so now now the, the state economy is suffering mm. suffering in the sense that that part where the government will have to invest mm. to bring up the society that part has dried down mm. you know and uh, as far as we understand coal mining will take some time to resume again in our state so that is as good as out we can say as of mm. today now talking about liquor uh, you see it's not only in Meghalaya, mm. entire country, the entire, entire country, yes. India. You know, the state governments, they make a lot mm. from, from liquor sales. Uh, this is a big social issue. It's a debatable issue. Mm. Uh, you make money from selling something which destroys the community, which destroys the society. I mm. don't think we'll go into that right yeah. now. But yes, this is a pan-India problem. This mm. is not only our problem. Okay. But how much can you get from selling liquor? Mm. You know, major share comes from coal. Mm. Now, when these two, when these two are taken out of the picture, basically now you are left with asking grants from the central government. Mm. You know, you, you give us some money so that we can do a number of things to, to keep the economy running. Mm. Now, now in such a case, in such a case, this model that we are talking about right now, this is not mm. sustainable. We will not be able to sustain ourselves in the long run, especially mm. in a time right now where we are having this COVID problem. We will mm. not be able to sustain ourselves. This is the time now to look inwards, mm. look inside. Yes, we have to compete with the outside world and we should compete. Our products will go outside, products mm. from outside will come to our state, fine, that is not a problem. But we have to look inwards so that we can understand what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses? Mm. What are the opportunities we have right now? What are the threats? So that we can build on the strengths that we have and the opportunities that we have right now so that we can transform our economy. And you know, in this, in this, entire, in this entire framework that, that, I'm, that, that I'm talking about right now, mm. the role of the government is simply to provide assistance. I've been saying this many times, support and assistance. You provide a bridge, you provide a channel, you, you lay a street, mm. you lay a platform so that these stakeholders will come and mm. they will take part in it. And you know what, Mayborn, one thing is, uh, is some, one thing which is uh, very important in our community. You see, public-private partnership is something which, mm. is, which is very potent, you know, in terms of mm. development of any economy. I think we have to work on this. Public-private partnership is something whereby you know the private sector can 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 bring all its resources, and we can build some good infrastructure because PPP model is basically meant for that. It's a funding mm -hmm. model so that we can build infrastructure, so that through the building of this infrastructure we can channelize mm -hmm. the economic activities that we have. And beyond that, there is something which is called venture capitalism. I think you will agree with me when I say there are many 
there are many people in, in our state who have a lot of financial resources in terms of wealth. Mm. They don't know what to do with that wealth. Why? Because there is no investment opportunity. On the other side, we have these very bright youths, so mm. talented talk about youths, the model, no? uh, yeah. very talented youths. And these talented youths, they have these bright ideas, but they have no money. And like ba Rudy said, they have no collateral, so they cannot yeah. go to the bank. So they're just stuck. So what do we do now? You know, all, all these big companies that we see now, like Facebook and mm. Apple, they were created through venture mm. capitalism, venture capital. There is this person with a lot of money. He sees a person with a lot of bright ideas. He says, you know what? I'll invest mm. in your idea. You make me a part of your firm. And when you make profits, give me a share from that profit. It's slightly different from conventional banking that we actually know. Now, you know, in our community, the Khasi mm. community, Khasi Jaintia community, and even in the Garo community, we have these people who have resources. Yeah. Okay, all they need to do is, you know, find these people with very bright ideas, the youth yeah. with very bright I ideas and invest in their ideas. And most of the ideas are, are, are always IT related. This is where, this is where these returnees, like Barudi mm. said, most of them, he, he said like they are all working in the IT sector outside. So now they have come back. So where do you provide them employment? Forces of demand and supply, government cannot do much. But if venture capitalists, they come into the picture, they can say, yeah. you know, you are the guys who have been working in Bangalore, in Delhi, you have lots of ideas, you know, develop something for our state, I'll invest in your, in your, yeah, in your enterprise. When we are talking... I want, I want to yeah. make one point here. Yeah, we have to develop a concept of value addition. Yeah. There is this, when you talk about coal, the revenue that is coming of bo from coal in the past is mm. basically to sell the raw material to Bangladesh or wherever it is. There is no concept of value addition. Mm. So that applies even to potatoes, any local crop. Food mm. processing, you're talking it, it's value addition. And that the wealth of any country comes from the value addition that you add to the raw material. This raw material will finish someday. What else will build after that? So this is whether you look at other countries of the world who have progress. It mm. is this concept of value addition from the raw material which comes out of that. Mm. So now that has to be very clear in our mind. Even the coal. I, in fact, the coal, for instance, it, we have so much coal in Meghalaya, we don't even have a single thermal plant. Mm. You know, we don't have to, you, mm. what is this black top which you use when you make the road, the tar, or bitumen you call it. There's something which you can produce out of it. Since we have the raw material I'm talking. Now, everything here is about the raw material to sell it, to make revenue and forget about it. You said about sustainability, that is it, sustainability. If you do not inject this whole concept of value addition, mm. it will not be sustainable. Yeah, when, when we talk of value uh, addition and when we talk to of venture capitalism, uh, it, it, uh, I'm reminded of this interview uh, that I saw on television uh, where, where an MLA, uh, a Congress MLA, he stated that uh, our state is losing 19 crores uh, in terms of agriculture because we do not have or we lack the utilization certificate. So, Barudi, ca can you please uh, explain what, what is this utilization certificate and why is it so important? Okay, let's say, let's take Meghalaya. Meghalaya, in terms of financial resources, basically, roughly its own uh, state resource is about 20%. About 80% comes from the center in the form of grants and loans, depending on soft loans, mini soft loan, whatever it is. Out of that, apart from that, there is something called non-lapsable funds given by the Ministry of Donor, which is only for Northeast India. Now, it has been recorded some two, three years ago by the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce, when we had a session on the Northeast that 48,000 crores remain unutilized that year. I don't know now, that year. That was three, four years ago. Why? Simply because state governments, I'm talking of the whole Northeast, state governments from Northeast were not able to submit the utilization certificates of projects already done. Mm. Well, for whatever reason, whether it was uh, just uh, don't care about it or lackadaisical or irregularities or what it was, mm. So the result is that whatever the fund was due to come back, to come to you for more, it's not coming because you're not submitting the certificate which for the project which has been done. So this creates a lot of, you. then you, 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 mm. you, you say we're not getting the funds. That is, the, that is one part. It's, it's, a very, it's a very common thing in Northeast. In fact, I don't know about Meghalaya government, how many utilization certificate is not submitted, I cannot tell you that. 
but it's a very it's a very good mm. point you are raising so we just lose out the funds same thing this losing funds which is mm. due to the state you just lose them whether it's the, at the state government level or at the local bodies government level simply because you are not doing things which you should be doing mm. so uh, based on that argument that you just made like uh, like if we compare between the two governments the former and the current government uh, uh, in uh, the former government has actually uh, uh, raised the salary of the of the people that are, uh, of the people that are working under the government sector whereas this government has actually like you know there is no salary raise and then uh, just recently we have also seen that there is a deferred payment so do you feel that uh, this government that we have by benjamin okay. I'll, i'll just answer this yeah. because oh, okay. one Already. thing about you have to be very clear yeah when it comes to the government uh, servant salaries yeah. it's not really it there's something called which is constitutional also yeah. which predictably you have the pay commission mm. okay it's in the yeah. constitution yeah. Yeah. and according to that the center starts yeah. it first okay and then the states follow suit oh, okay. so it's not necessarily depending yeah. on the car on the incumbent oh. government okay. so you have to be very clear about sorry yeah. okay sorry. Sorry. pretty clear thank you about rudy uh, so uh, like if we take a look at the government at this point of time do you feel that uh, the reason why we are lacking so much of funds is because of the lack of this utilization cer certificate that is not being submitted because we see that the state government uh, keeps on saying that we are lacking we are lacking in treasury we are lacking in funds so yeah. do you also feel that uh, it is because of this or is that, that is some other reason yeah that is that is one of one of the factors that cannot be the only factor mm -hmm. for me if you ask me uh, the main the main reason for for you know financial problems that we are facing as a state mm -hmm. uh, beyond beyond all of this which you have mentioned for me mm -hmm. the main problem is uh, economic dynamism which is absent in our state uh, you see if if the economy is dynamic mm -hmm. uh, the economy is pragmatic is progressive uh we are doing we are doing a lot of things at 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 the local level we provide gainful employment people are getting are getting uh, enough to 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 survive and to save and to invest one more time then straight away these financial problems that we are talking mm -hmm. about these problems will not be there because you see mebon understand one thing and it's pretty simple actually mm -hmm. very simple to understand when will a person invest a person mm. will only invest if he has savings if you if you have no savings you will not be able to invest yes. now when will you have savings it is only when you have income when will you have income it is only when you are working somewhere when will you work somewhere leaving mm. the government sector aside when will you work somewhere you will work somewhere if and only if the private sector invest in some mm. economic activities the cycle goes on you know i have savings i invest i employ you mm. okay then you have income then you have savings again then you invest mm. your savings then someone else gets employment and that is how the economy will move forward i'm talking about mm. a free market you know uh, adam smith in his book the wealth of nations he mentioned invisible hand yeah. okay if you read for the first time and you wonder what is that invisible hand if you read just a bit about that concept invisible hand means adam smith was talking about a situation where you know i'll come back to demand and supply a situation where this is an un un unobservable unseen market force which somehow works in the market to the extent that the forces of demand and, su and supply are equal or we call equilibrium mm -hmm. and this happens in the free market now you see if you if if you have a situation like that and a situation like that happens because of the invisible hand the forces of demand and so it just happens although in practice it is never perfect mm. in theory it's perfect in practice it's never perfect but still it's there mm. you know now if you have such a situation in in the state or even in the country for that matter mm. okay then there, there is economic dynamism there is pragmatism you know then there is there, there is progress in the state then these financial problems that you are talking about will not be there because you know why because then people will not look up to the government all the time mm. for money money yeah. money look up to the government no we don't need to look up to the government the private sector is strong investments are strong and this is how we are surviving change the okay. mindset uh, just uh, just last question to barodi uh, uh, don't you think that the, because of the lack of policies that we are having meghalaya is actually helping assam with the economy instead of helping itself because if you take a look at uh, when, uh, tourism as well the all the tourist caps from assam they go everywhere in meghalaya 
Whereas, like in Meghalaya, we are not gaining anything. The only thing that the only thing that those uh, tourist hotspots are gaining are uh, for parking tickets, parking tickets, <laughs> and uh, 20, 30 rupees for uh, like uh, the people who will be visiting those places. But apart from that, the state government is not earning anything. Whereas when you take a look at Assam, the people in Assam are actually earning everything. So don't you think that Meghalaya, in one way, is actually helping Assam? And when you talk of food products as well, all everything is being is being imported from Assam. Look, this import export, you know, we live in a world of interdependence that you cannot help it. Mm. The question is, the question is how you model yourself. Let's mm. say today, if you're talking about that export import, it's a more complex uh, thing. Mm. You're talking about demand and supply, it comes in there. Mm. Today, with all the China boycott, uh, Chinese pr 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 products boycott, mm. the hype that's going on, mm. the cycle industries in Haryana, in Punjab, in Ludhiana, 70% of those parts come from China. Mm. And they're not, it's stuck because it's not coming anymore. Then who loses it out? Yeah. But why I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this mm. is the way China developed a model for itself for others to invest there. Mm. Which and which which make others to depend on them. Yeah. It it comes back to the model I'm talking about. How you develop a model which make others to come to you. What is the strength of Singapore? Mm. Singapore has no mineral resource. Singapore mm. has no forest resource. Singapore has nothing. But the model they have developed is such that what is Singapore is today? I wish I could talk more about it. Yes. But I just want to emphasize that part about the importance of the development model paradigm which mm. attracts stakeholders to come in and invest in your place where others can take advantage be it job creation be it venture capital be it anything else that can come in okay uh, i'm afraid that we are running short of time and um, this is a very exciting topic ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of this program i would like to thank barudi and i will also like to thank dr benjamin for being a part of this panel discussion Ladies and gentlemen, this is Straight Talks. We will we will be back with you again next week. This is me, Bonling Doar. Thank you. Kublai Shibun. Ublai undang yaikar kuyapi.